assets are all cash, savings account, checking accounts from all banks, real estate, personal property. For example, Uh, for example, cars, ATVs, motors, like automobiles, and future assets or money applicant all adjunct what future assets means. What's a future asset? Now they're reading. 401k. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, it's a current asset. It's an asset that you have. You may not be receiving anything from it, but it's your asset right this very moment. I don't know what a future asset means. <laughs> Rochester, reviewed by their staff attorneys in Dover. Staff attorneys looked at them, right? This is Mr. Um, what his name is. Marsh. Hmm? Marsh is from Ro Rochester. Oh, no, no, not, not the attorney from Dover. Oh. Um, whatever his name is. He reviewed it. So there might be a reason they put that in there, just out of my caution. It was an edit that we made. Okay, okay well, that may be, but. Should we ask why? Uh, oh, I don't want to take that time. If you don't want to be rid of it, that's fine. You just give it uh, up. So there was no definition for select board, so I added this. Select board, the governing body of the town of Rollinsburg and the body authorized for RSA 165 to make all final decisions regarding the granting of assistance. Great. So, I'm suggesting a change. Because this says, has the authority, or had, or said, has the authority to make all decisions regarding the granting of assistance. Mm -hmm. So I'm changing it to say, the officer of the town or town, I don't know why it's town or town, or his or her designee who performs the function of administering general assistance. Such person makes recommendations regarding the granting of assistance to the select board. Mm -hmm. The select board has the authority to make all decisions regarding the granting of assistance under RSA 165. I'm suggesting we close down council with the select board. Mm -hmm. So Complete application, including any authorization signed by the applicant, allowing the application, which should contain and verify any further information, first of assisting the recipient. To include a signed authorization to release information from the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services. So, uh, so I was concerned, this is my question. When you get this specific, sometimes, it, you know, things change. So, so Caroline, I see she left a response. We have a general release. We do have this release. I think she's referring to this, but really have to use it. Can we just say to include a signed authorization to release information? And once again, we're back to the state level. So if that's there, then we'll have to be a general health and human services. I'll check what we have at work because we have to sign releases all the time for their. All right, so we're going to an open item. 
Uh, I want to skip application process for now because it was, was completely muddled to me. Okay. Caroline said she was going to look at it. I don't know if she made any changes. We can come back to this. That's okay. Uh, I, and I asked her if she did make changes. You know, it talks about it, it was kind of muddled. So let's go on to. I have an edit for me. Right here, responsibility of each of yeah. them. Okay. We don't have a waiting room. Where, yeah, where is it? So it's uh, in, right in E. So for, for the safety and health needs of the applicants, clients, and anyone accompanying them, and accompany of them in the waiting room. Uh, I would say two minute appointment. Okay. I would just say two minute appointment. Because it's going to be a town hall. But. For safety and health needs, clients, and anyone accompanying them, not accompanying of them. Yes. So whoever was reviewing this. And I knew we didn't so have a waiting room. This. We had the two chairs in the hallway, so I kind of added a waiting room. Because that's our waiting room at work. <laughs> accompanying, uh, anyone accompanying them, them Sorry. to an appointment. So that could be either waiting out here in the hallway or, or if they're assisting them, they have issues they need when they're being you know, interviewed in the actual room. So. I still want them to, you know, I, I don't want that they're in fact, they have an infectious disease like uh, chicken pox or hepatitis or whatever. TV at home and hanging out in the hallway. So applicants or anyone anyway, must immediately inform the welfare officer of the following, mm -hmm. right? And, there's, and then this following again, yeah, let's read this again. If there is a Contagious, different from communicable? Yes. So, the lice is not contagious, but it's open. Okay. Thank you. There's communicable disease of any of the following contagious diseases and contagious communicable factors. Where the lice that goes to the lice that tends to be able to manage. All right, does that, does that mean anything? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is. One of that part of that says that they're going to go with somebody else. You know, who's that somebody else? No welfare official shall make a home visit alone. So home visits will be made by at least two town representatives. Is that? Anything else? Oh, there's part of it that says, I think, um, there's part of it that says under eligible, I think I mean, we were by eligible, like if the kid's under a year old or something like that, like it's an automatic. Like they were very specific. There was something down below about that. Yeah. I don't it, think we're there yet. Oh. I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. So here's determination of eligibility and amounts. 
So I'm highlighting these sections to make sure at the very end that they match. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You say section C, it's still section C. It's the only reason they're mm -hmm. highlighted. Uh, so this sentence doesn't make any sense. I don't even know what it means. Whatever means at any or whatever time that person is poor and unable to support him or herself and without so, reasonable alternative options to demonstrate a general assistance unnecessarily. In the copy that I printed out, from, 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 uh, maybe it I'm working on it. It's a statutory reference, RSA 165, colon 1. So I have something missing? Can I see it, Mike? Yeah. I'm going to pull up to it. I don't know what the Ah. So maybe something got deleted or something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is completely different. It's got to be from the list of definitions from the statute. trying to figure out where this meets up again. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's here. So this is the first one. We've got it here. So, and it's, I think it's trying to define whenever. So you've got the first, right. okay, so whenever means, means at any or whatever time that person is poor and unable to support him or herself or without reasonable alternative options to demonstrate general assistance is necessary. So, so what's that mean? So it says, so the first part of the statute, 165 colon 1, uh, who entitled, the who, the who entitled, loans, um, uh, semicolon, local responsibility. Uh, so whenever a person in any town is poor and able to support himself, he shall be relieved and maintained. Does, does it follow with maintained by the overseers of public welfare of, the, of such town, whether or not he has residence there. For the purposes of this chapter, the term residence shall have the same definition as RSA 216A. That doesn't... The, the phrase, to demonstrate a general assistance yeah. unnecessary. I have no idea what that means. So maybe we just get rid of the word unnecessary. Can you see if that makes sense? I think what it's saying is that if somebody is physically in this town and unable to help him or herself, then that person is eligible mm -hmm. right. for our assistance. I, it's just unnecessary. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. Can we just get rid of that? demonstrate that there's no other way. Reasonable alternative options to demonstrate general assistance unnecessary. So they have to prove, it's a burden of proof kind of thing, the way I read it. Without reasonable 
multiple alternative options to demonstrate a general assistance when necessary. It, it, but, it, but it makes the meaning really unclear to me. I have no idea what it, that's what that word unnecessary. Please don't describe that word. I, uh, yeah. What? I don't know. I'm not sure it's going to make that much clearer. I would even get rid of the and. Whenever means at any time or whatever time that person is poor and not the first name, and unable to support him or herself without reasonable alternative options to demonstrate a general assistance. I'm just going to get rid of this. For a period at the end of options. And read it. Okay. It whatever sense? means at any or whatever time that person, I guess the person we're talking about, right. is poor and unable to support him or herself and without reasonable alternative, alternative options. Okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, that. I mean, that makes more sense to me. To demonstrate a general assistance unnecessary feels like they cut and pasted something and it doesn't fit. It didn't fit, right? right. Correct. Because when you look at, the, well, the, you don't have the reference up there, but when you look at the reference, what was it? Number was 165, column 1, it doesn't talk about demonstrated. whenever I see something like this. Yeah. You know, because organizations change their structure. And so when you explicitly mention something and then it no longer exists, then you're kind of stuck. And I'm asking, is it better to say something like refer to the appropriate state agency providing protective services for children? Yeah, like that. Probably would make more sense just because they can be restructured. They get restructured, you know. All right, so what do you say? Maybe call something different though. Exactly. Yeah. Refer to the appropriate state agency providing protective services for children for support in case. Well, it, was, it highlighted it. It highlights it in the note, and so I just copied it from the note. Okay, so we got that highlight. Okay. That inherited. So why is this here? We'll go here. So I'm suggesting a change. So it says the welfare officials shall first determine whether there is good cause for such refusal. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. There's something else up here. Uh, an applicant who is gainfully employed but whose income and assets are not sufficient to meet necessary household expenses may be eligible to receive general assistance. Or the recipients who, without good cause, refuse, right? So this case uh, doesn't uh, correct. Who, without good cause, 
from a recipient, so without good cause, refuse a job offer, or I said a referral, I'm using A, mm -hmm. to suitable employment or participation in the town's work care program, that be clear, or for voluntarily leave a job without good cause, maybe ineligible. So we're talking about ineligibility. So, so instead of saying the welfare official shall first determine whether there is good cause for such refusal, I think I'm suggesting, and I haven't looked at this in a while, the welfare official shall advise the select board regarding the refusal. Yeah. Don't we want to know if some, something? Yeah. yeah. Some stuff. Well, this shall advise the select board. So let's read that. Just said work here, so I said towns work. All right. <clears throat> I don't know why this is highlighting. So here's another case. I mean, this thing is not called a GED anymore. Right. What's it called? No. I don't remember. It's not called that. Right? Okay, we'll have to figure it out. It's or high education's program. Uh, so they changed it uh, not so long ago, I don't think. Clients enrolled in GED or high education's programs. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So Correct. Clients enrolled in... Do you mean higher education programs? I, I think you say high school programs they call them. Well, so there's a or. So clients enrolled in GED or... Oh, that's the result of GED, education? is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, so what are you suggesting? They enrolled in a high school equivalency program. I like that. But they do change again. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. Yes. I don't know why they changed it. But... I like the more general comments on a high school equivalency program. Or, or well, it's supposed to be higher education. Higher education program. Higher they high, went back to. High sets. High sets. I said. H, no, we'll just H lower case I said. I said, thank you. It rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? I know, right? Well, I a high school equivalency program or higher education so program. program. I'm going to say program. It doesn't make sense. Is that a Q or A? That's a Q. High school equivalency program, you have P-R-O-G-Q-A. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't say the spelling correct. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, but they were in a, a training program. They've gone back to school to be retrained. Yeah. Just looking to see how much. Well, at least. Get to the end of the session, maybe. Yeah. Is any of this change with recent executive orders? 
<laughs> that I don't I don't know about the non, who are non citizens. Like the, the takeaway is that it only gets an emergency, like if they have a heart attack in the town hall. Okay. We would and, you know, and they're regardless of their citizenship that's we would transport the laws for So what was my takeaway from that? All right. So they don't they're not qualified for for the state Medicaid thing, so I don't know why we would all right, so we just have this paragraph, and then we're at section D, so we can stop right here. Uh, good cause for I was, I, th I thought this was not last day or anything. Good cause for terminating employment shall include any following. So I'm suggesting we use semicolons or remove the final and and replace it with an or. Discrimination or reasonable work demands, or unsuitable employment. Retirement, leaving a job in order to accept a bona fide job offer, migrant farm labor, or seasonal construction, and lack of transportation or child care. So there are too many ors and ands, and so I think you should put semicolons. Just to make it clear what gets and and what gets what gets forward. So discrimination. So I'm guessing these go together. Unreasonable work demands for unsuitable employment. Retirement, leaving a job in order to accept a bona fide job offer. Migrant farm labor, labor. So I don't know which of these. I'm going to say retirement is a. What was the issue? I'm going to say that migrant farm labor and labor seasonal construction go together. Yeah. And lack of transportation or child care. Oh, who is the one? Oh. Oh, the front door, too, sorry. Right. Nobody else got in? Yeah, I don't know. He was, it was it not close not. type. Oh. When we got in. How did you get in? How did you get in? Yeah, yeah, we walked in together. We opened the front door. Because huh. in that door, I walked. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't anyway, know. I don't know. I didn't unlock it, so I don't know. So, uh, discrimination, semicolon. Unreasonable work demands or unsuitable employment, semicolon. Yes. Retirement, semicolon. Yes. Leaving a job in order to accept a bona fide job offer, colon. Yes. Migrant farm labor or seasonal construction. They go together. Yes. Colon, semicolon. And lack of transportation or child care. Yeah. Okay. Stop an asset. Yep. Happy five. We can protect the agenda, I suppose. We'll set up. Uh -huh. There's another coffee that we're not talking to the first one. Yeah. They'll be starting the other meeting in a few minutes.
appears I don't have a quorum. I don't think you can do anything. <laughs> That's a problem. Lack of communication with them people is a huge problem, and it, and it needs to. Can we maybe talk about this at meeting? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll call the uh, select board meeting July 31st, 2017, to order at uh, 633. And uh, first order of business is the uh, approval of last week's minutes. Um, I looked at them this afternoon. I have one. I don't think it was substantive. You changed it this afternoon. Did you, know, did you make that? I have them like that. No, I didn't have internet connection. Oh. When I went to look at my computer. Here at Town Hall. What did you do? That was later. Okay. So I had them do the reset, but I haven't had time to put that. I don't see anything. Oh yes. Oh, I just it, I I suggest replacing uh, the legal expenses with the board, noting that money for some USDA related expenses will come from the culvert project financed by a USDA loan rather okay. than just bond. So it's just a little clarification. That was the only change. So are we good with the minutes with that change? Anything else? Okay, great. So if I could sense this, the minutes are approved. A community input. Yes, sir. Could you state your name, please? Jeff Herring. Jeff. Herring, H-E-R-R-I-N-G. 43 Woods Run. Thank you. We're uh, somewhat upset by the recent uh, valuations by Avatar. Um, we would urge this group to immediately publish a proposed tax rate. Um, I've got neighbors that are so pissed off they can't even talk. Uh, our, I'd like to give you some examples, just so you can understand where we're coming from. Um, I took three, three properties, <coughs> a 286 Sligo, I believe on Woods Run, back over on the other side there. Uh, they went up 33%. Okay, that's a healthy increase. Uh, 121 Roberts Road, 42 acres, 4,500 square feet. Uh, last year went down by 11% and this year went up by 20%. Uh, Jalbert's Place, 46 Pinch Hill, 24 acres, 3,100 square feet. It went down by 0.5%. Mm -hmm. 43 Woods Run, my property, 2 acres, 2,900 square feet, up by 54%. More than 54%. This is an outrage. It's an outrage. I would suggest that you... Um, yeah, I, 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 we're going to talk to Avatar, but every... If you look at the last 20 years, what the woodlands over there has been treated differently. Our properties have gone up a disproportionate amount every time. And it's been going on for 20 years. It's, it's time for this to stop, and we, we've got to find a way to get the town more equitable with respect to the, the, the evaluations. The bulk of the town went up about 20%. Some of them, you know, I just illustrated one that went up, went down by 0.5%, which is ludicrous. It's ludicrous. This property is worth 
a million dollars and you got it at 582. My previous valuation was 321, now it's 495. Um, I, I don't think it, it, it's, it's not even so much this wide swinging valuations over the course of the years, it's the inequitable treatment of different neighborhoods within the town of Rollinsford that really is causing the, the, the issue, I think. And it's, it's, a, it's been pervasive and ongoing for the last 20 years. And uh, I think we've had it. I think that's the basic gist of my statement. We've had it. And, you know, I've been, I've been to Concord. I've had my valuation adjusted. That was 15 years ago. Um, it's an utter waste of time. So I, I just urge you guys to think about what you're going to do. And more importantly, you really need to come out with some feeling as to what the tax rate's going to be so we can plan. My taxes are already over $9,000 a year. When I moved here, they were thirty-six hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. you know, I, you know, my house. I don't think it's doubled. You know, you've got it up to over double what it, what I bought it for fifteen years ago, eighteen years ago. It's this. Okay. Fine. I, I, I hear that yeah. you're concerned. Yeah. I understand it. And there's no relationship between. I don't want to say there's no relationship. The fact the tax rate's not going to be the same. The tax rate's going down. Well, otherwise there would be civil unrest. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 All right. Just so you're clear. Yes, I understand. I yeah. understand. So, you know, what we're hoping to do, I don't know that we'll be able to, what we're hoping to do is to keep the tax burden exactly the same as it was last year. Well, I don't I, I, I hear you say the word hope. Well, you got to we, use don't, we don't know until we don't know until we get to the end of the year. Unfortunately, I mean, you know, it's our expectation. We set the budgets up so that you know there's the there is the expectation that we would be able to do that. But it really depends on what transpires for the rest of the year. So, so if the tax burden is roughly the same as it was last year, then your particular tax bill, if it goes up or or down, it's because it you know the your your valuation relative to the average valuation of the town uh, is in increase at a higher than average. So, and conversely, I can understand low. that you want to adjust the tax rate to fit whatever the budget is at the end of the year. So, no, 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 no. Uh, that's not what happens. The DRA we don't set the tax okay. rate. DRA sets the tax rate. So, but the DRA sets the tax rate based on our approved. Uh, appropriation that gets set by town meeting in March, and the amount of revenues that we've been able to bring in mm -hmm. that offsets it. So, it, you know, and, and divided by the the assessed value, which has now gone up by some uh, twenty percent. Is that was that the overall? So uh, ours went way way more than twenty percent. Right, but the town's overall. Right. So, well, then ours should be. Should everyone be at twenty percent? More? Well, no, because not so. so if, if you don't revalue, if, if you're only revaluing every five years, during that five year period, some folks' properties are going to increase at a faster rate than other people's property. Okay. So every, every fifth year is when that gets adjusted. And every fifth year, there's some people who go, and other people go, yeah. I'm not happy. We do that every year. <laughs> so our, our land value almost doubled. Mm -hmm. yeah, and almost. yet our road is full of holes. And large, it has been for years. Large, it's not repaired. You know? The, the, the land values have increased overall. So property is worth more the more land that one has on it. Yeah. That is just, that's one of the largest. Our, our land's not worth $265,000. We only have two acres. I, I mean, I've talked to realtors, and they're like, they confirm that that's just ridiculous. But further to my previous point, yes. there is an inequity here because our rate is going up at a much, much faster rate than other properties in town. Oh, it's nice. far exceeding any reasonable measure of the increase in the value of the property by an external real estate agent. I've talked to three real estate agents, and they think it's ludicrous. I, couldn't, I could not put my house on the market right now and get anywhere near 495000 for it. It's, it's ridiculous. So Nancy, is, are you finding the same as that? Nancy lives right next door to me. Yes, yeah, we're next door neighbors. Okay. Yeah, and our, our is Nancy Uita. Yeah. Did I pronounce that correctly? My, yes, my question is, and I, I, I was late, so I didn't Nancy hear. Uita. Getting, I, I just, if everyone went up at about the same rate, I'm good. 
but from what I'm hearing is that's not it's not accurate. And we always seem to go up and up and up. Um, our neighborhood was deemed a waterfront neighborhood, so <laughs> they took every single home and priced the land as if we were all on the waterfront. It is, that's the problem. Would you say that? Um, I'm just trying to think if there, I mean, one of the things that we might be able to do is have Avatar have a special meeting about what's wrong, if that's the source of... Oh, well, it's not just that. People get a viewing tax. So people that live on Rollins Road get a view tax. Or a view, I don't know if it's, it's a view... A scenic type. view tax. Yeah. A what? A scenic view tax. what? Yeah. For what? Well, Rollins that's essentially what, what you know, what we have because we're not a waterfront neighbor. Not me. Someone else, someone else is being assessed $25,000 for the view. That's just the old farm. Okay. Look at so, the tree. So, so fundamentally, there, I mean, it's, the town purposely, you know, distances itself from Avatar, so it's Avatar's problem to, to value all the properties in the town, but the town obviously provides direction to Avatar. Don't pay for it. Pay for it. I'm not sure. Oh, come on, you've got to provide some direction to the to the folks. No. Okay. No. All so right. here, the process is that they, you know, they're the they're the professional assessors. Whether you disagree or with them or not, so they're the professional assessors. We hire them to go out and assess. At the end of the process, the DRA, which is the New Hampshire Department of Revenue Administration that oversees all of this, mm -hmm. does a follow up audit. And nothing in particular was found to be amiss. There were some things that they disagreed with, but there was no extraordinary thing. So, mm -hmm. so you've got your professional assessors, then you've got the DRA audit, and we provide. We don't say, you know, go look at, go look at that house or go look at that neighborhood. You do know that this this is causing people to want to leave, right? I talk to more people that want to leave than want to come in. Mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, the. The general feeling in the town is that uh, if I could sell my house and find something else, I would kind of feel it. And it says to, you know, it's been taking you know, 10 or 15 years of this abuse and, and uh, people are pretty fed up. And you're going to, you know, no matter what you do, you're going to start taxing those old folks that live in downtown. You're going to tax them right out. So eventually we're going to, this tax rate's going to keep going up and up and um, the, the town's going to turn into a ghost town. Unfortunate. So, you know, some of us are able to pay our tax bills, and some of us are not going to be able to pay our tax bills, and and uh, it's unfortunate. But I'm just here to express my uh, extreme I displeasure. Yeah, we're listening. Okay. Well, but she just said that the tax rate was going down. Yes. Well, it's yeah. Well, it's got to go I down, but it doesn't. It's, have to gonna, it's going down. I just don't know. To can't what imagine extent, how right? far it would go down. So, well, those of us that ours went up 54%, you can understand why we have a little anxiety about the unknown. I understand. I don't want to get a tax bill for an additional $4,000 at the end of the year that I haven't planned for. All we're asking for is notification, an estimate or something to give us some idea of where we're going to be at when that tax bill shows up. Because I don't have an extra four grand laying around for tax. At Christmas time. Well, I can tell you, what, you know, the town expects that it will be in, in the municipal part of the town. But we don't know what the county, the county, we get hit with the county bill. Mm -hmm. We don't get hit with that county bill until December. December. Oh, no, so December. Well, that's the bill. We'll know about it. We, we get, we understand the tax rate, I think, before. But not much before, sometime in October, November. You know, we, we, the school closes its fiscal year at the end of June, and but they, I mean, it ends, but they don't close the books until sometime in October. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's the big part of the tax rate. We're actually, other than the county, we're one of the smallest parts of that tax rate. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, we we have no, uh, we have no control over over the school. I mean, we just accept the figures and and that sort of thing. So most of us don't have any control of the school. We just take it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, I would urge the flightmen to try to find other sources of revenue. Let's we'll see if we can get this town to grow a little bit and get some industry or something in here. Um, the, you know, the, I think the socialism experiment is over for the last 20 or 5 years, and we should try to move on. 
and, and actually be a little more progressive and see if we can get the town moving. Because it's, it's dying. It's going to die a horrible death. And it's going to take 15 years. What, and it's, what, what People are just going to start leaving. You know, we haven't had any difficulty selling property. That's okay, for but why? There's no, the school enrollment's going down. The, we, you know? School enrollment's going up. Yeah, no, I, don't, no. I, I don't agree with these figures. Um, well, you know, the way it went down three years in a row. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it's rocketing back up. But, okay, we can well, argue that's that later. It's a different issue. I just feel that the town is stagnant and, and not moving forward. And, uh, what well, would it look like if it were moving forward? Well, what would it look like? We could do something in the mills to generate a little income, some taxable income with some businesses and so forth. Maybe well, some more proactive uh, zoning. Them, you know that we don't we don't own the mills, right? I understand that. Maybe some zoning. But we, changed, we did. Zoning. We did yeah, do change zoning to mixed mm -hmm. use. Uh, Has anything happened? Before, yes. If you drive by the blue and building when you leave here, go mm -hmm. to the right, come down to the village and take a look. Mm -hmm. There's more new that there's work going on there. The man who owns the place is coming to the planning board tomorrow night to mm -hmm. discuss his options and what he wants to do with it. Did his valuation change? I don't know, sir. I think Not much. everyone's. Individual. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you that we have been told for a number of times I've been on the board for the last four years that the, the property in your neighborhood and the neighborhood next to yours has been undervalued. Every time a house was sold, it sold for what was it, fifty to sixty to seventy five thousand more than what it was assessed at. So it's I don't know what the history of your individual assessments are, but I mean, mine changes as well. So mine went up 150,000. Seventy thousand. Over how many years? Same. Between last year and this year, that was, year this year. that's yes. what my valuation went up. 170,000. Yes. Delta. So again, I think it's a little bit odd. Yeah. I can accept that properties are selling in our neighborhood. Well, those houses are twice the size of our houses. <laughs> Now, I benefit from having the cheapest, smallest house in the neighborhood. Sorry, Nancy. We're next door. But, um, yeah, this doesn't seem... I've been fighting this battle for years. When I bought the house, um, the valuation was not what I paid for it, even the day I bought it. So, uh, all right, but I've, said it. I've said my piece. Well, I appreciate your coming on. I'm going to make a note. I mean, if... It, if, if, if it looks like it might be helpful, excuse me, just to have a sort of a neighborhood, you know, have them concentrate on a neighborhood maybe, Avatar, if they would do that some evening. I mean, I can check with them. And certainly if you're listed as having waterfront property, you're nowhere near the water. Well, it's, it's a waterfront neighborhood. neighborhood. That's that's what they did. The half, half of it is on the river. <laughs> 19 right. years ago, yeah. It was right. on the other side. You're nowhere the other half is no, not. Can't, 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 can't smell the water. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. But that, that's what initially... That was their initial solution to bring all of our... When they sold the lots, that's what they considered it at. But if you look at your features, are you are you getting taxed as a feature or as being? Yes. Waterfront? Yes. Water? Water access. Un under your features when yes. they evaluate you? I apologize for, for being negative, you know. It's a Monday. Sorry. It's okay. No. It's all right. It's what we're here for. Yeah. But I'll... I'll I'll talk to Avatar and see if they think it would be helpful because it sounds like, I mean, Nancy's here from your neighborhood, you're here from your neighborhood, so maybe it would be helpful. The problem there. is, well, when I we see the Avatar car in the neighborhood, a lot of people just kind lock, of growl. Lock like the like they lock the door and they pull the shades down. Right. Well, because we've had enough. My concern is that I, I, I don't want to see that we've gone up 30 or 40 percent when if the town average is 20 percent, for example. So I'll be looking at pulling at, up and looking at, I don't know if we've we you just spot checking. We did that, yeah. Um, because yeah, that's just like not that. fair. Yeah. Yeah. I did a very robust analysis this morning instead of doing my day job. And uh, um, most of the properties in the town went up roughly the 20 something percent. And there's little pockets of 40 and 50 percent. And then there's some just absolute abominations that have not gone up at all, but should be up. So okay. well, um, it's happened in the past, it happened five years ago. Happened ten years ago. I just wanted to be fair. That's my only concern. We're bringing it to our attention, okay. and we'll uh, we'll talk to Avatar. We'll talk to Avatar. Yeah, we'll talk to Avatar. And so. do we have any plan for an estimated an estimated tax? 
coming out. Again, we're back to the getting that tax bill in December 1st. And, you know, we, I think as taxpayers, we have a right to know what to expect. The best, we, can, we can put out the tax rate as soon as we, which is not the tax bill, as soon as we... I can calculate it. I just want to know what the tax rate is. I understand. Yeah. Right. It's the tax rate. I understand. So we'll, we'll try to get that out to the public as soon as possible. There's some things that, you know, um, there are reports that the DRA needs from us that we can't do until certain dates. And so it, it really isn't until October fall that no. the tax rate gets set. Well, October is better than December so we, first. So, yes. So. so we will do it as soon as we possibly can, understanding exactly what you've just told to us. Because I believe Avatar had said that he, they were going that it should be in October because that's when you can go and claim and do an actual claim as to whether you think that your tax your taxes are right. The assessment. What the assessment. brings us to the board, please? Is mm -hmm. that okay? Thank you. So we'll we'll publish the tax rate as soon as we possibly can. Sometime in October. As soon as we possibly can. Okay. Will there be a notice sent out, or you just plop it on the website, or do you, do you uh, subscribe to the website? We have that access to yeah. the website. Yeah, it will be it will be like a, a news release on the website, so you'll get it. If you get the emails, uh, I used to. I don't anymore, but I can access the website. Will it be in bright red letters, or <laughs> orange, or green? It will, also, it will be okay. like, like this. Sorry, it won't be red. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. Yes, other community input. Charlie. Okay, uh, give roughly, okay, evaluation goes up 20%. That means your town valuation, your property value goes up 20%. Then your valuation should get down 20%. Rough numbers. I don't know what you just said. So the, okay. so the tax rate. Oh. I don't know what you just said. Okay, because valuation okay you, own, you own a house at 200000 Yes. Okay, it goes up to two forty. Your evaluation would have been, we'll say, 4000 Okay, so instead of four thousand, you should drop rate, it down twenty percent. Tax rate would be dropping down twenty, whatever it went up, so to level out. So if you pro if everybody in town is going up twenty percent of your valuation of your property, if it's more than that, you'll be paying more. If you're paying going up less than twenty percent, right. you'll be paying less. If twenty percent is the average, and that's not exact. Right. If 20% is goes. the average. Yeah, if 20% if is the average. Right. It could be more than 20. Is that the average? Do we know? I don't. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. Know. Yeah, that's what he was saying, but okay. unless you know the average. 25% was the average for some people. All right. Well, I. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your coming. Thank the, you. Uh, I don't know if you want to hang hang around and listen to, to the conversation we're going to have about um, Woods Run. Oh, um, the road? Yes, yes. the road. I'd like to get so. the super glue out. So, <laughs> so, are we ready to rock and roll? So Jeff and I, Jeff and I had a thought, you know, we've been talking about the 49,000, blah, 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 42 cents <laughs> that the state has given us. And we looked at our 10-year road plan and the two areas that are that we are concentrating on over the next two years, 18 and 19, are Woods Run and Heritage. Okay. And so what Jeff Jeff, you want to describe the, the plan for how we might use the forty nine thousand something something forty two cents? Yeah, what I wanted to do is um, reclaim seventeen hundred feet of Woods Run this year and binder it in. Because that's our worst area. Yes. Right at the beginning? Right at the beginning. So yeah. 1,730 feet of road. Um, that's, up to, that's up to the corner or the... Just past... Just, just past, past the river road. run? River yeah, road? just past it. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, numbers came back at 71,000 to do that. Mm -hmm. the yeah. So, so we, we got to scale it way back or we find other roads to do and we put Woods Run at the beginning of next year. How far back would you have to scale it? Yeah, it would be the yeah, third battle, the third battle. About to my house? <laughs> about, about, uh, I couldn't even tell you, it would be a few hundred feet. I don't have the numbers and calculator in front of me. To, to well, that. is it still not, what, what would be the disadvantage of, of doing what we could afford of, of the woods run? 
entryway. What would be the disadvantage? I mean, we, all right, so we wanted to do this much, right? We can, we can only afford this much. What's the disadvantage? This much of the road with all the potholes don't get done, this pot does. That's right, but I mean, so next year we could, or the year after, whenever we get back to what's run, depending on how the plan works out, yeah. it would either be, the plan is 2018 and 2019, we are hoping to address both Woods Run and Heritage in some significant way. No, the other the, thing I was thinking, I don't know if it can be done, is I'm pretty sure we came under on the transfer station. We came under on tonnage, um, waiting for overall gravel and everything. I don't know if we would take some of that money and put it towards that. It was, it was a whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. it's, so, a, uh, it's, a, it's a bond that's... For specifically only for the use of the trans that transfer station project, but it's a nice idea. I wish you know we could, but we can't do that. But anyway, yeah. So we we have to scale it quite a bit. I mean, it would be a so we have a, a highway block money that yes. we're grabbing as a result. It's not just for paper. Right? Right. It can be used for other things. Road. Road and road. for uh, equipment yeah. to work on the roads. Uh, uh, the municipal think... association sent an email. It was part of their um, their weekly. Uh, Whatever they call. I'm, uh, you think equipment is not me. The attorneys of the municipal association. Well, that's what you were saying earlier. And we have a backhoe that causes nothing but problems. It costs us another eight, nine hundred dollars. Recent more something. Even more than that apparently in the last uh, few weeks, last week. In repairs. Where'd you go? John Deere? Where, where was it? Cat? Who was it? What was the company you went to? They said they would take our machine and trade, and we had another forty thousand. Was it? It was Case and um, John. Okay. But it was around forty, right? That we needed. We all yeah, got it. Was around, around forty. Way. It was around forty. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have money that's coming. I'm trying to find. Well, well you. It's just for legal inquiries. Well, you must use the money on new highway projects not already covered in your budget. You can use it to do additional paving projects. The only limitations are that the additional funds do not supplant or replace already appropriated money, and that it must be used for highways. Mm -hmm. This is from Hi highways. Highway 27. 27. Judy from July 27th. The Missile Association sent out Judy, the executive director. I believe it is clear that you can spend the money on road projects. I think you can safely spend the money on anything you could spend highway block grant monies to do, although. That includes purchasing highway equipment. That's where I got it. Okay. That's where I must have read it too then. Where are you saying show me? Right here. Safely spend the money on anything you can spend highway block grant money to, including purchasing highway equipment. Can you go to that one plate? I'm wondering if she's missed the knot. Hmm. The word not. Well, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know that you can spend block grant money on on equipment. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be for roads, mm -hmm. not not equipment to manage roads. There is a one-page block grant explanation of the DOT website. Funds can only be used for construction, reconstruction, and maintenance of each municipality's class four and five highways. That's big old letters. Right. May, may I ask the road agent a question? It can also be used to rent equipment to maintain local roads. Equipment to maintain local roads? It can also be used toward equipment to maintain local roads. The intent here is that it be used toward local roads, i.e. not used to build a new library or school or buy a fire truck. No pun intended with our town. <laughs> Sir? Is there some advantage or disadvantage from a, from purely from a longevity perspective to doing part of the road and then another part of the road or doing the whole thing? Mm -hmm. with so the first 1,730 feet of the road is all broken apart. <laughs> so I was going to look into reclaim that, put the crown back in the road because the, the yes. road actually does this and holds. Yep. It's like a lake when you drive yep. through it. Been there. Put the crown back in mm -hmm. and binder it, let it set a year. Or, or to winter binder, and then overlay the whole road. The rest of the road is in good shape, and you can overlay the road. So tack and then overlay it mm -hmm. uh, an inch and a half thick, with okay. half inch tall. So, it's a multi-year so, plan then, at that point. 
Right. It's a, it's you just detailed for two to three years worth of. I uh, to do to do all that work depends on how we do the budget. Yeah. It's it's a one. It could be a one year plan. Okay. It could be possibly. So, so Jeff, the the amount that, that this part, what's yeah. the seventeen hundred feet, is the part that legitimately needs to be reclaimed. Yes. So if we do this, it we're still going to need to reclaim that part. We're still going to need to reclaim. So whatever's feet. left. And then when they bring in a reclaim to do 200 feet of road instead of it's, 1,700 it's feet of road, cost us a they're going to charge us a lot yeah, more. Yeah, and then they're going to charge us probably a $2,000 mobile fee to, to move that thing over to the other job. Yeah. That's why I wanted that. <laughs> so we just, so. just can't. We just it doesn't, can't. It doesn't exist. Yeah. The money doesn't exist. So... I would say then, so sorry what's wrong. Yeah. Uh, so the point, that is, I, the point I would make, though, is that I, I feel that the road is causing my property value to go down. But you want first on the list? <laughs> oh, shit. I'm first on the list for a lot of things. But, you know, I, I, I think it's causing the property values to go down. Just, you know, I got a, a giant pothole in front of my house. So we started but, this 10-year yeah. road plan last year. Yeah, I understand. So, and, and Woods Run, Woods Run and Heritage, they're... They're yeah, good. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. Schedule. They're yeah. the next two yeah, I get it. So. places, and yeah. we're trying to juggle how best to, you know, is there a piece we can do on one, a piece we can do on the other. We were hoping to be able to do this reclaim part, mm -hmm. put a binder on, a winter, what Jeff calls a winter binder, and and do the overlay in 2019. Okay, so we would do that reclamation this year with this new money, put a winter binder on, and come back in 2019 and overlay the whole mm -hmm. wood spot. And it would allow practical. us in 2018 mm -hmm. to concentrate on heritage. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. So. It doesn't sound like it's practical from a budgetary perspective to do any reclaiming this year on, the, on what's wrong. That's correct. It's okay. not gonna, we don't have yeah. enough money. That's, yeah. So we'll have to figure out what we, what we want to do. Do it or you know, go, 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 go for heritage. Go for it. Um, your second we, year we still need to figure out how yeah. to make the 49000 work and and and... Yeah. There is some possibility that it's non-lapsing funds so that we can carry it over if we yeah. decide not to use it. Although, then what does it mean for something that you haven't planned? Because clearly, if it's next year, we're going to plan for it. So, so it's a little silly, but mm -hmm. anyway. So yeah. So we know we, we are There's well aware of what's wrong. We are well, well aware of heritage. We're going to try to address mm -hmm. those as soon as we possibly can. And uh, Jeff, did you think of uh, what might fit? I heard back from him at like almost 4 o'clock this afternoon. Okay. So I'll have to go back and run some numbers on other things. Another thing I was thinking about doing, I don't even know if it, if, I was going to run it by a couple of people just to, on their thoughts. It was actually grind out them big pothole areas, fill them in with necks, and then shim the road back out, tack the bejesus out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll stay together. And then... Well, my concern is shim it up yeah. and overlay a section of the road. I grew up in a different part of the country, which has similar road conditions. Um, my concern is that it's it's degrading quite rapidly in a couple spots. Um, some spots that you haven't even mentioned, the river road when it comes around and joins uh, parts of whole, wholesale parts of it are now missing. Um, so it, it's gonna it's gonna it's blow gonna up apart. in the next couple of years. Just you know, your experience is different than mine, maybe, but. Um, well, I walk I, the dog on the road every day, so I've seen the the thing degrade over the last five years. <laughs> so, gonna, so we have a public yeah. hearing next Monday at six fifteen yeah. to talk about the money. So we'll we'll have. I'd hope that we'd had some something to be able to talk to say that we were discussing at the end of this meeting, but it looks like we won't. But so six fifteen, and then when we update the ten year road plan, which probably now won't happen until September. We usually hold a public hearing after that to say, okay, here's the, you know, here's the, because we get closer to the two, the two and three years, the next year and then the year after, you know, it, it's a lot sure in what our... I'll try to be more positive in September. <laughs> it's okay. okay. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. So, so did you want to talk about the equipment as far as the, uh, the highway money? Mm -hmm. Jeff, what was the, uh, I'm trying to remember what the estimate was. Wasn't it around 40000 that we were going to need to? I think Case came in, they were going to give us, I don't have 
have the exact numbers. I want to say they were going to give us they, both John Deere and Case were going to give us 45 for their machine. 45 for our machine plus to buy a John Deere would be 45 plus an additional 50 for the John Deere. And I think uh, Case came in at, it was like 30 grand for, for a, a Case machine. Um, and Katna wasn't even interested because who? Katna. Um, the, the trouble with our machine is they don't make it. Anymore. Like nobody really, it, it's just one of the machines that, and, and unfortunately, you know, all the companies kind of talk. So when Case went to, you know, Chadwick Bayross and said, hey, you know, we're looking at this machine, what will you give us for it? And Chadwick Bayross is like, yeah, we don't want that machine. We've had many healings and many hours of work done to that machine. Um, and like I said, one of the things that, that really hurts us is, is they stop producing that machine. They don't even make it anymore. So, which lowers the value of that machine significantly. And, and just to clarify, we're not the only ones that are having problems with this with the with the machine. There there are other people out there that are having the same issues, if not more than, than we are. So. So. My my gut is that I want to invest this money in our roads, not in a piece of equipment. That doesn't do all that much on the roads, as far as I can see. It pretty much stays in the transfer station, doesn't it? We use we the use the back a fair amount. It has a big box that goes on the front of it that pushes all the snow, picks up snow in here. All right, all right. So and the other thing is that that side road cutter that we were talking about that we don't have. Well, that, no one does well, what I thought was $2,500. <coughs> right, right. You wonder why we would spend the money. Right, yeah. Right. So what about it? I would like, like, because if we, I'm afraid if we do pay me now at fifty grand, just to move the equipment, we get charged. So we're not going to get much paving out of that. <coughs> so it's too small a job. I, I really think so. The, the it, economy is too small Yeah, so either roll it over into next year in the paving, or get some equipment that he could use. Because if, you, if okay. you're getting the side cutter that cuts it, Level. it's going to pay for itself in five years. And they last longer than five years. How much are we paying right now? We pay 4500 this year. And he, he didn't do all of it. He only did we a few haven't done any of it yet. So well, they. We're on the books. <laughs> but that, that cutter goes on what machine? It would go on the Bobcat. It would go on the Bobcat. Bobcat. That machine, that... So what it is, it's a... It's a it's a, um, it's called a sidearm mower, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of towns use them on their holders or their tractors machines. Um, they make them for, for skid skiers as well. Otherwise, it looks like an excavator arm, and it's got a, a, a five-foot right. mower head on it, and they use it to mow the sides of the roads. So, I, I don't want to lose sight of the backup, um, which I'm not real pleased about, but we should talk. How much are we anticipating the repairs this week? They were in our shop for a good solid eight hours, and then he showed up the next day for another four or five hours. And how much an hour? What happened is it's, uh, we're having electrical issues, and what was happening is this, things were actually shorting out. Um, you know, I, think, I think they get $125 an hour, plus, plus a mobile fee. It's quite a bit of money we're in now just for repairs, right? The other option we should talk about, if we don't, we need to talk about legal action. See if that makes sense. I mean, obviously, we've got a lot. It's it's yeah. I mean, the, the trouble is, is it, I I think it's just going to be a reoccurring problem. Like, you know, so far our records show that we're approximately we haven't. When the machine was new, warranty has covered approximately twenty-seven thousand plus dollars worth right. of warranty work done to this machine. Right. And since we've the warranty stopped, we're at probably three plus thousand dollars that the town's paid. That doesn't include this piece. And that I no, I think that's part of this if I figured it out. Okay. Um my my I guess my thing is is, you know, how much is this machine gonna cost us and what the breakdowns? You know, 
unfortunately, we, we rely on that machine all through the winter, and, and even every day, really, we, we use it, we rely on it, because we don't have any spare equipment. So if that machine goes down, then we're, we're down a piece, plus whatever it's going to cost the town throughout the years of, of maintaining this thing. I, I don't... Yeah. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, there's this equipment issue. Right. There's the possibility of equipment that could return it, could return investment in four or five, in five years. But it's another piece of equipment that we have to maintain. It could break down. It has to, you know, it needs parts replaced. And then there's our backlog of roads. Mm -hmm. You know, road maintenance. I mean, we know we see that backlog. Well, then we would have to. I think we take care. We're gonna just forget about the equipment and go with roads. We got to carry it over. The economy of scale, so it says not there, right? We don't. I mean, the other thing I could do, the other thing I could do is I could ha I could have another smaller company come in and price this out to see if they would come in any cheaper. That that's that's another. We're such a small job. There really is seventeen hundred feet of road. It's small. You know, it's a straight. There's no hand work. There's no ditching. There's no culverts. There's not. It's it's set and pull, and you're done. I I could I could go home or something. Um, no, I'd use. I'd probably be Scott. I could, I could call several. You, you need compassion, so you need guys with the bigger roles to be able to come in. They'll at least get 95%, 92 and I'm doing 90, 95% compassion. Well, you guys aren't having the hearing until next week anyway, right? So if gets some right. more, and more bids this week. Yeah. How close are But, you know, hearing is before the board meets again. Yeah. So. How do you want to play that? Because you could just be hearing saying we're considering this and that. You know, this is I mean, where we stand. Do anything the board wants for There's a couple of yeah, I'll give it. I won't be because it's going to fall on YouTube. Right, so, here. but um, you can uh, you could give a couple of options. You know, does it does it make sense to overlay some of the smaller streets? You know, using a smaller contractor. Is that a, you know, does the board think that that's viable? It might be. I don't know. It, it might fits be. In the or if, it's, if it fits into that and using the smaller companies and maybe pulling somebody from the middle or end, end of the list. So, so we're, we're the big middle roads are, coming, are at the beginning, and yeah. then all the little roads are, coming near the are at the end. Correct. So they were there, and at least at the beginning, when we set up the plan, they were overlays. Right. You know, it's right. 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 So, so, so it looks like we have, you know, there, there's the possibility of equipment. I know I'm not crazy about it. Just not crazy. I mean, just only because we have s such a maintenance backlog on our roads. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't want it, it's just that it, it's just... Well, I don't want it, but, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the point. I don't want it. It's, it's, it's what, what's the most practical. More, if you want to keep it in roads, unfortunately, I think you're going to have to wait till next year because we're getting towards the end of summer and the prices are so high. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with that. And the paving stops in October. Yep, mid-October. And he has culverts and everything else to worry about right now. Mm -hmm. And if we want more bang for our buck and put longer get another extra mile out of it, we could end up getting a mile out of that. Yeah. I'll have to talk to, to DRA about how we're going to manage this. Because is, didn't the municipality say that all the towns are running into this problem? Yes. Oh, you know, yeah, it was what, you know, the state, you know, it's like, hello, the state gives you, you know, whatever it is. Right. And it's already July, and, and you have to have a public hearing, and you need it, like, you oh, know, seven days notice to have a public hearing, and then there. it's October 15th. Right. You know, so it's like, well, what? But they have put in flexibility where you can carry it forward. So. That wasn't known at first, though. It, it, that wasn't part of the original, which is why we stepped into gear to do this. Because right. we felt, we felt it, you know, nobody said at the beginning that it was non-lapsing. So it appears now it's not lapsing. I mean, how do you, how how do you say then next year that you're spending an, an extra, let's we'll call it fifty thousand, extra fifty thousand that you wouldn't spend otherwise? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So does That's the board crazy. want me to reach out to smaller contractors, or does the board want me to just say, I, mean, I need to know? What yeah, I understand. I think the board is saying let's we're going to spend it next year. That it makes more sense to add it on to the the heritage and for. Woods Run project that we're thinking yeah. of doing, and then we should be lucky that we have that fifty thousand to 
help us with that. Is that yeah? Mike, you want to buy a backhoe? I don't. I don't. Mike you might not, don't want to, but we see the need for it. Mike does not want to buy a backhoe. Mike would have rather seen the same. I was not a backhoe, so. But if we have a... a if you a, can a, predict a lemon, sir. No, 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 I want a different type of... And it doesn't, I wasn't there. I'm not saying more than that, so. Um, I just think he's breaking down. I just think in the middle of winter, you lost your heat and you lost your transmission. Then you're, and renting, then you're renting a machine that right. X amount of dollars. But these are things that have already happened and they've had to come right. and fix them. So well, I, I, mean, I would I appreciate really the to. CIP to kind of look this over and, and see how it fits in with the CIP. Because okay. it's, a, it's a big expense, right? It's a CIP type of expense. It is, yeah. This is an unplanned, this uh, unplanned is, one, though. But yeah. Well, yeah. Nobody wants happened, to have a brand you know, new machine with six hundred hours on and have this much trouble. I can guarantee you that. So, it's we're gonna have to separate the other one where the other these problems be upset about happen, this. Usually happens to a machine that's ten, fifteen thousand hours in. So they probably won't be upset, but they're gonna be less upset knowing that they got an additional unanticipated fifty thousand to solve the problem. Or they're gonna be more upset when you come next year and say, "Oh, we knew we had this problem." And we knew we had an extra fifty thousand dollars, but we decided to spend it on paving, which I know they want too. Just, you're not going to please everybody one way or another. So, I, I, uh. so you, you, so, so Mike, you would prefer to consider conversation about the backhoe? I would. Jody, I would like the backhoe, and if I can squeeze it in. I mean, if the, you know, it, all you need is two of you. I mean, but what happens? If now we start all of these things and it comes back, and now the price is more. And for what? For the backhoe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then what? Well, we don't do that. I have to call and get quotes again. Just get the quotes again. If he comes back next week and says, you know, that's just not going to work, then you go back to plan B and put it uh, last until next year for payment. I mean, so you would prefer I mean, to do it? I'd like to at least just find out a little more. Yeah, it. because you're going to be paying $5,000 in repair costs next year on that thing. Mm -hmm. Better put it in the budget. Yeah, I mean... Uh, and I... Yeah, it, it's what it is. Look at what we're going to pay. You know, the, the, the past is... Not, yeah, um, no. The past is not a good to the future. I mean, it is what... It is a lot this year. I would... Then it's been the a board, consistent problem. So. The board is instructing you, I think, to update those figures and to get them as firm as possible. Is that correct, Ford? Yeah, I mean... Well, you, you, it's highway, Jeff. I'll do well, whatever the board wants to do. You know, in the end, you know, the town's putting the bill for stuff. And do I like to see, you know, good money going into a machine that shouldn't be having these troubles and it's going to keep? No. So, you know, it's, we're stuck between a, a rock and a hot spot. I mean, I don't, Taxpayers right there, what are the taxpayers? Oh, oh no, no, let's, no. please. I don't know. Let's, let's just keep it to the board. It's our, it's our meeting. There'll be community input at the end. No, so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, I think the town will be angry no matter what, and, and justifiably so, but I, I would prefer to spend this money on roads, but if two board members would prefer to, to, to look at and see what the current prices for the backhoe and let's do it. Well, here's the thing. Your town knows that it needs roads. The town doesn't know about this backhoe issue. They have yes. no idea. So they think is this is a wonderful backhoe. It's brand new. Why are we going to need another backhoe? Right. Yeah. That's right. So do you want to sell they it didn't, now? They didn't think we needed, they didn't think we needed a replacement for our 30-year-old fire engine. So, so not do gonna, you want to sell it now or do you want to sell it in March? I don't know that I want to sell it, but, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's a tough call. Either way, you're going to get it. You know, it's not clear to me that the raft of issues that it has are necessarily going to continue. I know that we've paid a lot of money. I know that there have been issues. It's not clear to me that they are going to continue necessarily. We have a result from that, but, you know. That's the that's what that's what's hurt that's what's sort of eating away. I mean, we haven't actually solved the problem. Yet. They keep coming back. They think they fixed it, but we continue to have electrical problems. So uh, the all the problems that we've had have all probably ninety percent of the problems have all been electrical electrical related. So, uh, 
Is there another place that we can go to to bring it? That we can bring it only to one place? Usually they're deal specific because their software, when they plug in, is for Volvo only, case only, CAD only, John Deere only. Is there another Volvo contractor? Chadwick Bay Ross is the only contractor around. There's one in Maine and there's one in New Hampshire. And I think the way they work is people in New Hampshire stay with New Hampshire, the people in Maine stay with Maine. I could be wrong. Well, it's that way with plow trucks. I would say that the board wants you to get firm up the, the well, it's right. True. I mean, it is. It's the board, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. That's, that's how it works, to, to get prices. Okay. I'll make phone calls. Yeah, it doesn't work, you know. I'd like to at least investigate it before we begin. And I'll verify to make sure that we can do this. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just looking at the. Jody read it to you. I mean, it, it's, oh, this is right. a statement that's from the DOT. This isn't, this isn't the Municipal Association. It says the funds can only be used for construction, and reconstruction, and maintenance of each municipality's class four, five, and five highways. It can therefore be used to be part of a match or for a project in the bridge aid program. It can also be used towards equipment to maintain local roads. The intent here is that it be used towards local roads, not to be used for others. I mean, that, and that's right, from so DOT. Roads. That's not... Okay, okay. Uh, they should know. I mean, yes. they're, they're the one giving it to us. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Thank you for reminding me. I don't also don't want to violate the law either, so I mean, I, I appreciate that. So. But it's... Okay. So, Jeff. Let's go back to the agenda. Was there anything else? I presented a couple of purchase orders last year, last week that you guys that didn't sign. One was for a safety fence and the other one was for a door. Was for what? Safety fence and the door. Okay. I don't remember the door. Can we talk about the safety fence? Absolutely. So, so there was some... There so was I thought we were replacing it all. No. When I talked to you, you said, I wanted to replace this all. The fence that we took down, we're going to be replaced. Right. The fence that's up, that's yes. painted, tan, yes. or brown, or whatever color it is, stay. But you Ooh. told me you wanted to replace it all. No. Yes? In front of the dumpsters. So it's just replacing the existing so We're replacing the one that We do have to add on a few feet the way the bricks are. So we're going we're gonna to come by the demo cans, do the kick in, follow the demo cans down. And then where it steps down, we're going to take the fence and step it down so we will fall off the edge. Okay. And is this? I can try. I don't know if I can. I'll try. Here it is. Just ask. Oh, I um. So we're going to reuse a majority of our fence that was there. Mm -hmm. They need to put all new uprights. They're going to pour into the asphalt and the concrete, epoxy and everything, and I think they're going to add on a few feet of the fence. Yeah. To make Yeah, some new fence rails and posts. Yes, the, the, the post. And this, I think they're adding on like 15 feet of new stuff to make it. But the brown wooden fence is staying, is staying in there. Thank you, Mark. Is it working? I can't go in here. So yeah, I hear it. Here, but it doesn't think it's working. Because there's people in hot air. But... I'm good. I, I spoke with Jeff last week and got that explanation from him, so I'm fine. Yeah, so we're sorry. So, it's so just the, uh, we're just moving so we can talk to everyone or do we move well, we can move yes, and then we can talk before we already start talking. But... Move to accept purchase order 973, the AAA fence. For fence for transfer station, this is safety fence that will be will be placed by the recycling. Right, so second. So and it's for one thousand. Oh, sorry, one thousand ninety-three. So we were confused last week, I guess, right? I was doing that. I didn't hear everything. I apologize. Yeah, maybe. It's not cosmetic to replace the fence by the the compactor. Nope. That's going to stay. It's really just the one that they had to. Plus take. some additional. I, I heard the additional, yeah. but it's the only way we had to replace retaining wall. Yep. That makes more sense. But Any other so questions or comments? Another question is why wasn't it part of uh, the. Because uh, I was hoping when I put the pads in and raised it up five inches, I would have my height. So we can use the same. I was, I was hoping they would cut it down more. And that's all. They took two feet off the top. 
right. when they, they graded everything. And then right. added another five inches to the pad. I was hoping that my demo pans would give us our, our height that we needed. So and it didn't. didn't. And it didn't. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Should we call the question? Sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, I didn't. So we had a bunch of issues with uh, the door. That's from the sprinkler. I don't know why you're just getting that bill. So I think that was why none of us remember so. hearing a problem about the door, and then it was May. So we wanted yeah, to yeah. May 18th and May 25th. How many purchase order number? Who fixed that purchase order? 969 to Haley Door Company. Second. All right. So. So the doors. We have a maintenance agreement, which he comes in and adjusts yeah. all our cables, our springs, right. oils, everything, yeah. make sure that the drawers going up and down the street. Um, and what happens, due to the moisture in the, the highway facility from you know the trucks being in and out and everything, the sensors that came with the doors, I don't know, it was 10, years, 10 years ago, I guess now, uh, they all failed. So if the sensors ain't working, the doors wouldn't open. Yeah. Okay. So we needed to replace a bunch of the sensors, and then I think he got called out on an emergency call one Sunday or Saturday that the door was just going up and down by itself because it was a short. Um, what it was is it actually one of the remotes had an issue, and it was, so we that ended up having to get a new remote. Yeah, know. see, I, I was, I was not going to watch We need to hear about this. We don't remember hearing about this. Because I, I know I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that we had trouble with the door and hey, the door came. Maybe we didn't know it was $942 of trouble. And we were surprised by that. Yeah. Okay. How right. much is that for the $942.50. This is an invoice. So, so, so it has to be paid. Uh, what? No maintenance. Maintenance. Building maintenance? Why should be. All right. Shall I call the question? Any you have other comments? I tried doing away with the census, but they said it was against the law, so. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Try. Incidents that happened this winter, one with the wing in the side of the door and the 550 getting hit. Well, but we already have like 13,000 worth of vehicle maintenance. That's, the, deductible. That was That's the, the deductible. The thousand dollars is the deductible that the town has. And then the insurance company on the second one mailed the check direct to us instead of paying the um, Wayne Shalou himself. <laughs> It's just that, that when I asked, when I was getting ready for quarter two, what the what the high cost of vehicle maintenance was. I thought the stuff was all paid. This is new to, I, news to me, too. It was, it was for the accidents that happened this winter. So to see another $4,000, I, I don't get it. So, I, I mean, I'm not upset with you. I'm just like, what? I mean, we... I thought that was all paid we for. We have $13,000 of expenses in vehicle maintenance for the highway department for quarter two. And you know the accidents are supposed to be one of them. So, you know, I would like Caroline to, I would like a, a, some kind of project estimate. You know, this accident, this much money. This accident, this much money. Because I know the thousand dollar one was for the five fifty. That's the deductible for that one. And the, the wing that came up and hit the door on the GMC top kick, whatever the total was, the insurance company did not mail them to check the rack. They mailed it to us, so we had to pay for it and then got reimbursed. So that must, must be the change, because they were supposed to do it directly to Shalou. Yes, yeah, they, they did not. So now this this puts us in a bind. You know, I'm not, Again, it's not you, it's just it just puts us in a bind. I mean, we'll have to figure it out. We will be able to, but I'm not a happy camper is the bottom line. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm not happy. I didn't. All right, so... <laughs> we move this, right? Is that gonna, uh, I don't know. No. Yeah. Okay. Did you move it? No. No. Okay. 
Move to accept purchase order 1264 to Wayne Shulu Auto Body for one F550 for $1,000 and one GMC Top, top Kick for accidents over the winter for $2858 for a total of $3,858.16. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Not happily, but aye. So, from a budgetary point of view, what what we should consider, you know, for the fall when we work on the budget is that reimbursable dollar. That you know, the whatever thirty five hundred that we put in there is just it, it's just not sufficient. It's going to have to cover things like this, right? So that's just something we'll have to consider. Well, at least we started the line. Yes, at least we started the line. Thank you. You're feeling like a, an optimist. You're feeling what is what's the word? Optimistic. Optimistic Last tonight. half full tonight. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. You better That's keep good. going, Miles. All right, Jeff. Anything else? Uh, that's all the good news for me tonight. Oh, it was just um, <laughs> just filled with wonderful good news. Let's look and see what's here. Uh, Doherty Lane snow damage. Uh, what is the basic? It's supposed to be a letter. Now. All right. Yes, so we'll, we'll we'll do it when we get to the letters. Yeah. What well, you said you went out and looked at that. I don't see anything. Okay. So, Jeff, we're having a public hearing next Monday at 6.15 about the roads. So, you know, what we say is going to depend on what, um, you know, we may call a quick select board meeting or we may just say, here's what we're considering. I am uh, tomorrow, unless we do it tomorrow night before the, the planning board. I have a planning board tomorrow night. I will be here. And I'm out, I'm out of town. So, we must try. Right. So. So, so, how about this? At the public hearing, we'll just say that. We'll say what we looked at, and we'll say how much it costs. We had to change our mind. Now we're now looking at either uh, replacing the backhoe, which will play to great reviews, or uh, moving forward the money to the following year and adding, adding to what we were going to spend next year. All right, so that we don't have to meet. That we'll just have that kind of a public hearing. I was going to say, if you do need to, I'm available for it. I can be available for it. Thank you. All right, I think I think we're good. Was there something else? Um, yes, uh, transfer station. So. Um, oh, transfer station. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, yes. Still waiting to hear back from when we're gonna have a meeting. They warrant a meeting as well. Um, Lamprey, sorry. Um, haven't heard back yet. Barb is still on vacation, um, which is Jay's wife in Mad Bear outside. So she's usually. The dispatcher. They usually rent a truck, it sounds like, and goes and picks up. But Jay never called anybody. Northwood didn't get picked up, nor did anybody else. So I said, this can't happen where we have multiples. So I'm assuming he said he was going to call Paul right away, and Paul was <coughs> supposed to not come because we had to hire well, Shipyard. Yeah, Shipyard yeah, came to haul all our stuff back. Okay. When that receipt comes in, will you make sure I see that? You will. I'll, I'll email Caroline. So, I want to custom pair as well. Um, so, talking to Northwood um, and just double checking, making sure I had all my ducks in a row. We don't have to use the truck, um, we just have to send it to a huge. That's the contract. Right, we have to pay for the truck though, because we're yeah, part of the co op. But the truck is going to be paid for as of this year. Fully? Yes. We could remove ourselves from the co-op. We could, but you're still going to pay. You're still going to have your closure fees. Like Summersworth doesn't use the trucking. Um, Stratford, does, Stratton doesn't use the trucking. Multiple towns don't use the yeah. trucking, but they're still part of the co-op because they have to. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about removing ourselves from the cooperative, but there's this other little consortium. I don't know what you call yes. it. Yes, a four town. Can uh, we remove ourselves from that? Yes. That we can always remove ourselves from that. The trucking for everybody else will go up, and but before we wanted to pull and we wanted to pull. We were the only two towns that wanted to pull. Everybody else was happy with their service. Right, but we we, we ended up deciding we couldn't because the truck wasn't paid for and the closing cost for that was going right. to be more. Right. So I thought we had a couple of those. So huh? this year or last year? When you say, I thought as we had a couple their of projections years. right now, we had eighteen thousand dollars left to pay, and they are projecting because they had extra money left over last year, they threw it towards the truck. So 2017 and 2017 is going to be paid for, or 2018 is going to be paid for? I'm 
will double check, but I believe it's at the end of 2017. All right, well, that would be good to find out. So, yes. So, Northwood is still having issues as well as we are. Yeah. So, um, and four of the five towns agree that the truck is being beat on. So. Who's the holdout? The <laughs> Maverick? Okay. Yes. <laughs> You build up a relationship, you know? Right. Yeah, no, yeah, no, and they're the ones cool. that they're the ones that are yeah. the go to yeah. for right, the person. Right, right, right. We're dealing with them the most, right? Correct. So so I think it's worth exploring yeah. the yeah. removal so of the trucking distortion. Yeah. Well, whatever it's called, just a little four or five thing. Yes. So because if North would pull out, it's definitely going to be out of our ballpark anyway. It will yeah. we have to pull out anyway. Yeah. So that's why they were so adamant about keeping us in Northwood last year. I do know, I think Caroline and I did run a number, and I think Shipyard is $20 more than can this quote, because, I mean, obviously we don't have a contractor, and we called them spur of the moment, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, said, hey, can you help us out? Um, but I did talk to Shipyard, and they are very interested in all in our stuff, and would love to have a contract, and we're going this way. Well, we don't have a contract with them now, actually. You know, it's well. It goes. It's month to month. That's all I'm saying, right? So they can. I I guess a, a contract statement. Yeah. They'll haul X amount of dollars, and this is what it will be. Well, yeah. I'd like to talk to you. So well, in other words, they'd like to talk to right. us. I would love. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. So let's find out first things first. And, and we'll find out from Jody about. And Lindbergh doesn't. We're still waiting for this meeting to talk. You know, another great thing too is when you go with a bigger carrier. You know. If Shipyard has a breakdown, they got seven other trucks. I fully concur. So that's it, one of the, the there's, in my right, eyes. The risk associated with, you know, they put themselves at great, I'm not going to say they, I mean, it was uh, we were part of that decision, yep. the, the board at the time. And I'm sure it looked like a good decision then. But when you've got such an expensive truck and it's just one and one driver, you're not able to distribute risks. You're not able to, you, there's, you lose some flexibility and agility. And especially in this kind of an environment where recyclables and, and gasoline prices and all of those things have some amount of volatility and have that across the years. So I, I would like the idea of uh, uh, considering removing from the, ourselves the trucking consortium. And when would you like me to stop? No, well, we have to hear from Jody first. We need to know what, what kind of liability we have if we just remove, if, if there's an outlay of cash on our part, then we have to take that into account. So don't do nothing until you hear from us. Do you want me to have that conversation with Lamp? Because they'll go into another sales meeting. Uh, well, we're just asking, I believe we're just asking, what would it cost us today, if we want, you know, at the end of 2017, to remove ourselves from the trucking consortium? Okay. Don't we want to know that? We want to make sure we find out whether or not the truck is really paid off at the end of this year or next year. Please. Well, that's part of the question. We want to know what it would cost us to remove ourselves from the truck, right? So if there's anything associated with the truck, that would be part of it. I think Jordy's saying they went into panic mode by just asking the question last time. Yes. So we're not creating anxiety that doesn't need to be created. We just confirm first that, yes, it truly is the end of this year or not. And the next year. You know what I mean? We don't need to tell us. Party well, party if there are other year. closing costs, uh, there could be other closing costs. There could be. Right. Right. There could be. We just don't know. That is true. All right, anything else, Jeff, Jody? Mike? Tim, okay. transfer stations, probably 99.9% .9 done. We're waiting for the electrician to, to hook up and uh, do his thing. And uh, When do we think the compactor will be um, I'm hoping operational? I'm like, hoping soon. Can you give me a... No. Nope. can't. Next Todd's, week? Todd's dealing with the electrician. So. Next week? Um, I, sure. Maybe. Um, you're after. not going to... All right. That's a, fair enough. Okay. Well, I, I don't know, know what to say. The, the, the reason... The reason on the pad? Giddy, giddy, giddy. All right. It's all bolted. It's all, all on the pad. On the, pad. Okay. the sooner... Excuse me. The more experience we have in, in determining what our hauling costs are going to be because we've got a... We've got two compactors now. We're only going to be hauling full compactors. One of them is bigger. I don't remember by what percentage, but one of them is bigger than the other one. So five yards. Instead of it's five yards bigger. It's five yards bigger. 
So we're going to save some money. It would be interesting to, to, you know, as we get closer to getting the budget ready for next year, to determine how much you know, we think we might be able to save. So that's why. I'm <laughs> and I just have to meet with you at some point about bulk ordering. So, but since we have to you redo know, our mean, joint loss meeting, it's next Monday now. Bulk ordering, as in paper towels, toilet paper. Order away. So, so. order away. So, take <laughs> buy whatever you need. No, I mean I, I've always thought we should do that anyway. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. Is that it. That's it. Good night. Good night. I'm just really here to listen. Oh, okay. I can give you a quick update about sure. Family Day. Sure. Um, family Day is going okay. We are having some fundraising issues. I think it's because businesses are being tapped out with either the 5K raise and the Recreation Committee doing fundraising. But I'm hopeful that we will be able to have enough money to do. That's why I haven't come to get the money yet from the town donation because I don't want to do it if we're not going to have the fireworks. So I just want to make sure that. It's, a, it's definitely a possibility. So don't spend my money. No, 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 no. <laughs> we are keeping but, it in the line. Yeah. We're so we have waiting other lines, but we're keeping <laughs> yeah. it in the line. But I mean, we have you know the day's events are all um, taken care of, and it's, you know, mostly the same things. Having a hard time getting the, the whole group together to kind of talk, but we everyone's so busy. It seems yeah. But um, we're doing some. Um, email and trying to resolve that. We're hoping to have a meeting on Thursday. Just the rec is meeting next Sunday night. What's that? The rec is meeting next Sunday night if you want to send an email blast to them. Well, I asked them if they want to participate and they never replied back to me. Send it again. A lot of emails went through. <laughs> okay. All right. I I'm got sure it's just no reply. Well, someone told me they tabled it and just never told me. Because so. it was in the middle of summer. Okay. So, yeah. But anyway. Because I would love to see if you know some of the um, um, counselors might want to volunteer for yeah, working the car the yeah. game and we want to try to have some fun competition with families and that kind of thing, but that requires people to, to run it and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was looking to see if maybe the um, your counselors might be willing to do something during that day. It'd only be a you know a three hour period of time. I am going to put something, if it's okay with you guys, put something out through the email blast. And it still goes to Tia, is that correct? Is that okay if I put that out? Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's coming. It's going good. I'm hoping that everything will work out and we'll be able to have it. Are you still going to do your movie night? <laughs> I, I, I've got the screen. It just came. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, we're going to talk about it on Thursday. Okay. Um, we're either going to do it. The, I also thought of possibly because we were worried about the parking. I thought about maybe having it at the grade school and having it in the field, you know, and maybe have the movie screen, you know, in the pavement area. Um, so I'm going to talk to Kate um, mm -hmm. and stuff. But, you know, either either place would be okay. But I was concerned about people trying to park in the fire station. So, we, you know, that would have the whole parking lot. It's, oh, wait a minute. Is Willie Street still closed? Mm -hmm. Is Willie Street still closed? It, it, has will, closed it hasn't yet. been closed yet, oh. but it will be, well... Mobiliz mobilization should be starting this week, but uh, I don't know. Okay. But, but once they start, it's it should be no longer than two weeks. Oh, okay. But we can still use. Um, but the the school the school, there's, the school will be open. Oh, perfect. So you you can go in the front. Yep. You know, and you can exit this, and then like you, you know, like the bu yeah, the boat the, um, yeah. bus loop. You can still use that. I, I you can so, go out yeah. the, the other road. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Um, Pardon? They just finished paving. Oh, okay. The back parking lot. All right. I'll talk, I'm going to talk to Kate first, though, just to make sure if it's, it's cool with her. But yes, I plan on it. I, I got the Good. great big screen. What is, the, what is the film? What's that? What film? Oh, we haven't determined that yet. Ah. Okay. But it would be, it was, it's, it's going to be kid friendly. It's probably either going to be the, the Beauty and the Beast or the one of the Disney ones or something. Excellent. So, yeah. Frozen. Yeah. Frozen, yeah. 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 So. Big baby with my now great nieces. I. I yeah, we have to watch it like a dozen Reluctant times a week. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, everything's going good, so. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so back to the agenda. Uh, police removal of shed. I, I forgot to check in with the Municipal Association at the end of this afternoon, as you saw, just to see if we need you know, some just a little transaction or a little contract or something. Finally Did you talk to him? Finally got in touch with him. Mm -hmm. Very difficult man to find. Had a name drop, chief's name. 
<laughs> so you finally Whatever got works. Yeah, so I, I sent him an updated um, bid form and um, I texted him and I said, you know, along with that, we would be happy if you removed some trees and branches for us. He said that would be doable. Okay. So, so he gets the so shed and we get some. Pardon? Uh, an yeah, an inclined yeah. sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, I just want to know from the municipal association: should we have some kind of little agreement so that that way our various insurances are all lined up? You know, just for a buck. You know, as you said last time. Yeah. Okay. So he has the bid form. He has till next Monday to drop it off at town hall, and we will open it next Monday. Okay. So it went out on the web, actually. No. I just sent it to him. Like we said we were just going to Yeah, so I mean, it's not a public bid, so we don't have to do a time. I mean, all, all I'm saying is if it's not a public bid, we don't have to do it. Hey, I put it out as legal as, as, legal as I could. <laughs> Understood, but it should be public then, if it, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. Let me back up. I don't, I don't think we need to do a public bid based on what we've said. So that, so if we don't need a, to, to do a public bid, then we don't need to... You have some, but you need some sort of transaction. Yeah, just a contract that says, you know, the town is, has, you know, we are, you agree to remove the shed for one, you know, to take the shed for one buck and blah, blah, you know, just to say what's going on so that, so that everybody knows what's happening. That's all. But it's not a public bid if it's not, if it's not open to the public. Okay. That's my only point, right? Does that? That's why you're checking with the municipal association too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. say, can we just, we just want to do this. Because there's no liability or anything. Yeah. 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 I mean, we don't want them on our town land, and then something happens, and who's responsible? So I'll keep you posted. As the municipal association says, but it's only a public bid if you let the public know about it. So that's why I'm saying it's just a. He was the only person who was against any, we had two public bids, but yep. he's the only person who against any kind of interest. Yep. So I think what the board decided is we weren't going to have a public bid, we would just, but we were going to check with the municipal association to see what kind of... Yes, yes, I you wanted to still send them that sheet. I don't remember you? saying that. Yeah, but uh, if I did, I'm sorry because I, I wasn't clear. I think clear. it's fine if you go to the... Yeah, it doesn't. It's not going to hurt enough. For, so I, I'll just send the copy to Tia to tell her to go. Oh, I don't think yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sorry. I think he just needs to say, you know, for in return for the, for the metal and the town, old town share that I, I promised to take down X amount of trees or whatever. I mean, whatever the, that's all I need to say, right? Really. Yeah. But then you're just checking to make sure there's nothing. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, just in case. That's you know. You cast a buy for the buck. I'm always surprised by what I don't know. Right. <laughs> okay. Anything else for departments? All right. So we're into town administration. Uh, updates on the culverts. So um, we did get finally from Royal Tanner. Uh, some confirmation that they would be able to replace Jeff for the two weeks that he's going to be out, and they're going to send us the uh, estimate of what that might cost us, hopefully sometime this week. We also, for the last board meeting, once we had the okay from the USDA, I signed the notice to proceed and sent it off to Parker. He, at the time, you know, we had that meeting with him last Tuesday. At the time, he was thinking about this Wednesday. Uh, he's since sent some documents, which I've sent to HTA, uh, you know, the C he, so he did a SWIFT, which is one of the environmental things he has to do, and he also sent us a design for the uh, head walls, head walls, something like that. So HTA is, is reviewing all uh, those things. Um, okay. Any questions on the on the culprits? All right, sit. Uh, the planning, which on the planning board agenda for tomorrow night, just to make sure that. Uh, as soon as I get the confirmation tomorrow night, I'm sending you a Google form to someone else today for the police standards. Um, yeah, it's basic. Yeah. All right, uh, the old mill language that's just there to, um, to 
Lois could do that. Uh, housing standards. So I wonder if we want to talk to look at the housing standards. And I reviewed them again today. And there was a few places where you probably should. I mean, it's, most of it's just boilerplate from Dover, right? So there's a couple but there have been some edits. There's a couple of edits that I think you might want to take a look at. Section, um, I mean, Article 2, Section 119.9, Section D. Exempts existing structures in the building? Grandfathers. Grandfathers. So right. Well, that's, they're not building anything new down there. That's the whole point of having a mineral housing standard is to be able to enforce mineral housing standards from landlords that aren't actually maintaining their properties. So, I wouldn't be grandfathered What about the people that aren't in the village? That aren't in the village? Yeah. No, they still, they still have they, Oh, they all have, they all have to. They all have to. There was an exemption built in right. by, by somebody who edited this to remove the village. Right. But the whole town is... Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So this was, this was an edit that, re that removed the village, but everybody else was going to have to follow them. Just there are... There are uh, it's, uh, one structure I can think of on Rural and Giroux that um, would be it would be grandfathered. That this one too. Oh, I see. With that language. Yeah. So I mean that we could use this to deal do with the garbage vermin. A couple other things in here. Where we don't have the teeth right now to do that. So yeah, we definitely always... want to take that out. Would you be willing to s to sit with Tom? Yes, to sit with Tom. And there's another section, a section F under one nineteen ten, where any unit having a failed or damaged heating, plumbing, electrical, or structural deficit, or failure caused by the actions or failure to act on the part of the occupant, uh, on the part of the occupant, shall be the responsibility of the occupant to remedy, including bearing the cost of such remedy. So. Reading it, but I understand if it's the way that I read this is that it's whether it's caused by the occupant or not, <coughs> this occupant is still responsible for everything, right? Can I, can I just yeah, no, sweet. I mean, I might just where, where are you? Right, there. right here, yeah. I understand what they're trying to say, but I don't think it's, I don't think they're doing what they think they might be accomplishing. Oh, okay. So any unit? Like, no, no. I mean, what they're saying is, I don't know how you prove it, if it's if the failure is caused by the occupant, that's right. then the occupant is responsible to remedy it. Right, but look at the first part of the sentence. Any unit having a failed or damaged heating, plumbing, or electrical or structural deficit or failure caused, caused by the actions or failures to act on the part of the occupant shall be the responsibility of the occupant. But this, again, is a new edit. So I would have Tom... I don't want you to read it. So I mean, maybe you can read it. Any unit having a failure or damage to the plumbing, electrical, structural deficit, or failure caused by the actions, or failure to act on the part of the occupant. Well, it's not very well. It's not, it's not so, elegant. So the way I'm reading it is that if, if there could be a failure in the system, whether or not it was caused by the actions or an action. But the, but the occupant, the renter, would still be responsible for fixing it. I understand how you I mean, parsed I mean, it. So it can be parsed that right. way. So, yes, so I, I share your concern. Okay. All right. So let's have Thomas. Yes. And also, there's nothing about garbage disposal requirements for dwellings of three or more units, having a dumpster. There is isn't. That I could see in there. I will mm -hmm. again. But mm -hmm. this is something that... It keeps we have, coming up. It keeps up. cropping up. Yes. And we think so it's somewhere. So let's ask Tom but if what other towns... Can we put it in here? Yeah, let's ask Tom if we put it yes. in there. Yes. Perfect. So okay. I'm well, excellent. Do that next. Uh, not, well, I'm out of town. I don't know. Usually I do it on Monday. Right? He's, yeah, but I would set up, set up a, you know, a meeting. He's happy to meet later in the day, so if you wanted yeah, to do this on... Yeah, no, 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 I know, but whatever, whatever you can, right? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like now. Well, I want to get it done as soon as we can. So. Yeah. 
much like the welfare thing. Yes, I know. We all want to get it done. <laughs> So Tom wanted to talk to us about that. So, uh, so you will be talking to Tom. So that will move that one forward, I think. And then he also wanted us to consider instituting a septic plan review in order to cover the review that he does for septic systems. So I asked Carolyn about this today because I, and apparently I've just missed. I, I, I'm not remembering our conversation, but. Um, before, we never reviewed them. We just stamped saying that we had ex that the town had accepted our copies, right? And we, we passed them on to the people that needed to pass them on. But then there was an issue with one of them where we should have reviewed it, but because we didn't, uh, Carolyn was trying to explain to me. I don't remember this. I don't Do understand what our level of review is supposed to be at. I know that when I first got on the board, they gave me a stamp and said, here, stamp this kiddo. And then when I got on the, and and I the said, same thing, you're the junior member, you have to stamp them. I don't know nothing okay. from no septic system. Right. You know, so, I, I, I don't understand septic system. Like, no, oh, no, we don't. I understand the general. Stamp, I know what they do in, in general, general terms how they do it. But size, capacity, I have no clue. So where are where, where, where you going with this? What you're yeah, a $50 fee. Yeah. So, so what is he doing different than what, we're what we used to do? He's yeah. looking them over. He's actually looking them over, apparently. Oh, he's actually looking yeah, to see if yeah. they're 100 feet from the well. Yes. Yeah, reviewing the plans, I guess. He's yeah. reviewing them. Like, he, we asked him to review <laughs> the building like, 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 for compliance because he's doing the same thing with that. I didn't realize that. So, I'm told that we asked him to do that, but I don't have any recollection of that. If there was an issue, but I don't know what that was. I'm hoping one of you will remember. We're all in the dark, but I don't So, here, what's, what you can ask him. But apparently, other communities, I guess the city of Dover, not that we have that, I mean, the city of Dover, they're saying, but I guess they did, they tried to do too, for review. I don't know. Well, have seven employees that have Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I mean, I don't know what other... Well, it's simple. If the town is supposed to review them, then we should, we should do that. It was, it's not clear to me what our level of responsibility right. is. So we'll ask Tom what he thinks our level of responsibility is, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. So we don't have to make any decision about the fee. We'll just right. continue to uh, get more... But if not, then we should have them not. Then if right. It's costing us... Money. If he doesn't have to, we don't have to have him do it. I didn't realize. All right, anything about the rec committee? Uh, I did some rough numbers today after looking at the buses, and even with our extra field trips last week because of the paving, we we adjusted, we, we estimated 3,000 for buses. So okay. we're right there. So, right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. so and then there's other lines that we have to adjust for like the CPR that hasn't come in yet because we zeroed that out, but we ended up having to pay for our CPR. So, um, but we should be under in um, salaries. Mm -hmm. Because like people will take a half a day up here and mm -hmm. there, and um, they'll the estimated I think thirty thousand for salaries, and it's going to come in. I'm ballparking. Yeah, yeah. No, totally I understand. I appreciate your ballparking. I took the first, I took the first check and added a couple of hours. And just called the plot. Yeah. So, there's only three weeks left. So, mm -hmm. um, there is first to order in here for shirts, first to order because they don't have enough. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of weeks ago, they were supposed to be done last week, but apparently there was flooding in the mill, and it put Seco oh. printing behind. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you for doing that. It's one of these, it's not really a black hole, but because we haven't it done is. it before, you know, it so, is. so. And they are generating an average of $100 a week in snacks and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. I don't push those out still. <laughs> sugar. That's sugar. I don't know. All right, thank you, Jody. Yeah. Uh, all right, so tree trimming for Eversource. Eversource is doing some tree trimming. We talked about that, I think. I don't think there's anything new other than because of the tree trimming that Eversource is doing, there are some things on Sligo Road, and so it's causing Jeff to, to say, look, 
we'll see what Eversource is doing, right, before we execute our, our uh, that purchase order. So we're, Caroline is going to post a notice that we are canceling the 6 o'clock Six o'clock public hearing on Monday on the trees. Okay. Still doing like six fifteen on the right. Yeah, because yeah. it's posted in the newspaper, so we can't change right. that one. Right. So on the on the extra on the Monday. Right, right, right. right. I'm reading it for right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we will be canceling that. There will be notice posted, and then at some point, and the letters have to be sent to them. Any to the residents, so we'll just kind of wait till this works its way out. Uh, utility assessment method. This was a letter that we need to read, and Caroline hadn't had time to scan it and put it on the web. Is it polls? Yes, oh. and Avatar's letter to us. So we'll try to get that up so that we can all read it. And and, and if you want to uh, weigh in on anything, you'll have to do it before next Monday's meeting, right? Okay. So we'll put yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I guess we should talk about vacations. This one, they're not necessarily vacations. Vacation or business schedules. So next Monday, sure, I know, I know. Sorry, that's why I, I changed it because I know it's, it's business. So next Monday, Michael is not going to be with us, but Joey and I will be here. The following Monday, you are not going to be here, correct? Yes. And Salma is not going to be here. And we weren't sure. We thought we might have to cancel this because we weren't sure we were going to get a note taker, but Cordy's available. So we need to do a bus and forward. Anything else about that kind of scheduling, vacation, or something else over the next couple of weeks? Okay. All right. Uh, historical committee, the non lapsing account. And the meeting was canceled. Okay. All right. It canceled the day before, so we never met. So. We'll take it. Yeah. Congress, and they have rescheduled. Oh, so. This is just, um, oh, that's still on the agenda. So, board of selectmen meeting twice a month. We'll, I'm not, I don't want to talk about it tonight. I'm okay with that. Um, policies and procedures. So credit card process review. I, I sent to the board the notes and the current credit card policy. Mm -hmm. So having the statement is pretty much what we decided that we would do, is just have the statement yes. here. But Caroline said where the receipts are, so is that sufficient for you to? I'll pop in before meeting and make sure Okay. Okay. Excellent. And then purchase orders, changing the $50 limit to $200. We had a conversation about this last week. What uh, I forgot, actually, that I had sent an email to Tom Dumay to ask him what he thought. He came back and he said he was okay with that. So I don't know if that makes the board feel any better. From an accounting point? From an audit point. Audit point, point that's what yes. I'm yes. And responsible, you know, control. Right. Control and accountability. They just need some limits. So I don't want them to have to do the limits. So long. So I want them to have, yeah, the point is, bless us. <laughs> right, we don't have the full purchasing policy in place, but this is this at least gets us consistent with the credit card policy, which gives them $200. You're both okay? I'm okay. We'll go. We'll try it. All right, so I, I will entertain a motion then to raise what has been really just a conventional you know, kind of a by convention because there's been nothing written down about that is true. Uh, about purchasing, whatever. That we um, a motion to raise the threshold of purchase orders that come through the board from fifty dollars to over over two hundred dollars. So move that we extend the purchase order limit to over two hundred dollars. Right now, it's not right. I'm saying. Will we extend the purchase order limit from fifty dollars to over two hundred? You want to over two hundred? Yeah. So if it's exactly two hundred, it's fine. If it's two hundred and penny, then theoretically you have to come. Okay. So that's what you want. Yeah, that's. I think that's what you want. Did you get that, Salma? That makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna think about it. All right. <laughs> I, I know, I know what we're trying the intention to do. is. I just don't have the right words. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we've had had a conventional limit of fifty dollars. We're, we're we've got a motion to to change that to, to over two hundred dollars. Anything over two hundred dollars would have to require purchase order. Yes. That's the. Do I have a second on that? Sure. Second. Okay. 
Any discussion? Questions? I, I would be happy if we pass this to let the department heads know about this change. And to remind them when I do that, to please make sure that purchase orders come to us before the purchase. Mm. All right. Given that, I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you so much. There, we we uh, plucked away at it. I don't know if you want to set another date. We're not going to be around for a couple. Maybe we should wait till everybody's back and then okay. set a date. Is that all right? All right, we'll do that. Um, all right, now we're at standing items. So, uh, board member activities and updates. Michael, Jody, what you up to? Friends meeting on um, Sunday. Uh, I have to meet with Lamprey, obviously. There's storms, so maybe that's it. That's enough. That's enough. Uh, planning board tomorrow night and sent out a doodle poll to the police space needs committee members with five different dates on there for them to select a date for our next meeting. All right, excellent. And of course, the budget committee is meeting this Wednesday. No. So you can order two reports. Um, building permits. Well, first we have a septic system for 41 Rollins Road. <laughs> a lot of activity on Rollins Road. It's been reviewed by Mr. Clark. So there you have it. And we have purchase order number. Yeah, purchase order. Uh, Time to go on the Building permit number 2017 uh, 83, 3 Gagnon Hill Road. It's, oh, it's the, the condo, one of the condo buildings. Um, they are um, resealing the rubber roof seams. The next one we have is 2017-084. Um, sort of have a, a number is Lot 8, Scouts Landing. What Lot Street? I've not been assigned a uh, number yet, apparently. It's uh, plumbing and HVAC work. Um, has not been reviewed by Mr. Clark. So we will wait on it. Okay. Okay. Do we have a post it now? Yeah, I'm just going to say, you put a post it He did all the other ones. Maybe uh, Maybe somebody slipped it in. It must have got put in here. Yeah. Maybe it was there last week. Oh, Maybe you threw it in. We didn't, uh, didn't, didn't review it, so. I don't know if the, the estimated uh, value is correct or not, so we will put that one aside. Next we have 2017-085-139 Woods Run. Um, installing two central air systems. $6,558. Fee is $295. Reviewed by Mr. Clark. <laughs> Not right. It looks like the last one we have it is 2017-025. Uh, 620 Rollins Road. So they are remodeling their house, uh, fixing part of their roof, and doing some insulation work. Uh, Mr. Clark has reviewed it for $925. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Civil War New England, attention Suzanne Heward Chair. Tax map 1, log 57, log 20, turbine 1, 1. Okay, so we go. Dear board members, Ralph Phipps, as owner of the reference subject land parcel, has asked us to represent him with regard to said land parcel and current use taxation matters. As such, we are corresponding to acknowledge Mr. Phipps' receipt of your July 17th letter and the June 7th appended avatar on our associate with New England letter. We're also ready to request a meeting with you with a select board as may be appropriate in order to discuss the address of the following topics relative to the matter at hand. Area of the land subject to land use change tax, valuation of the land area subject to land use of change tax, payment of any land use of change tax due, and the interest of Mr. Phipps. Privacy, we ask that our request of meeting be undertaken in an executive session. We can't do that. It's a public matter. It's not a payment request. No, it's, no, it's a, for. Yeah. It's not. You can't. So. So they want to speak to us. Yeah. Say, I mean, it's relative to land use change tax, but he hasn't taken it out unless he wants to take it out. Maybe that's yeah. what he's wanted to discuss. Sure. This is the letter because he, he had some equipment on it, right? And then yeah. they said all they had to do was move no. it over. No, no. One of them was equipment, the other one was something else. That was the vegan letter? I can't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember what this one was. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. What was it? Okay. That he's using more of the land than is allowed in current use. So he doesn't have enough land that is not being used to be considered for use or to qualify for current use. He has, so he has enough land. It's just that he's, he's now encroaching on some of the, or that's the, that's as, the as thought. As I understand it, yes. Okay, all right. From that. Yeah, so we'll, uh, so the question is, I know that I met with Dave Nyland and Avatar mm -hmm. in a morning meeting, so it wasn't, you know, it was sort of handled that way. Or we can do a, a board meeting. I really, you know, we're going to ask Avatar to come to the board meeting. How would you like to manage this? I was with you. Were you with Nyland? Okay, so there were two of us. Uh, the board board it was, yeah. So you want to do it at a night meeting, like at 7 o'clock? Whatever is most convenient for Mr. Fitch, perfect. Okay. If it's, okay. you can't do it at night, then we'll try to do it in the morning. But I'm going to say it's public, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We haven't had any other current use committees in private, right? Yeah. Uh, the one that, I don't believe that's public. Did you know it was noticed? It was noticed. Was it noticed? Yeah, I don't think it was noticed. It was just there were two of us here. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to meet with him. You know, just to just get the yeah, meeting. it's just a preliminary meeting. No decision, just figure out what they want. Does that does that work? Or, or one of us can do that? I don't know. It's more convenient, like I said, it's more convenient for him to come in in the morning if that works. It's fine by me. If not, we'll call me for the next in the public meeting. You're not going to be able to make any decisions for yourself. So. Correct. Let's put it back to him. You can go out to the back. <laughs> Now. So are you done? Uh, yeah. Are you done, Michael? I am, thank you. So who's going to meet with? No, Caroline's going to call. Um, Caroline and I would chat about this, and I'll have her call them and, and see if it's, you know, just as a preliminary, they would meet with one of us, either during the day, in the evening. 
and then we'll bring it to the board and, and see what the next step is. Okay. There's a letter from Wendori Lane. Did you read it? It's suitable. I don't know. I just know what's in there. I will read it. We understand that you have a complaint about damage to your property due to snow removal activities this past winter. After hearing his complaints, the Lake Board member Mike Rollo went out to look at your property, saw no visible damage that seemed to result from snow removal. Sincerely, Schuster. Sincerely. Is that good? Sincerely, who would sign it? Okay. 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 These are uh, attorney papers um, under the culvert work. These were here last week. Um, these were all from last week, but there's a few new ones this week that you signed off on. So it's more. Yes, these were here last week. We, get some, we have some. So these were the USDA. This was um, our bond council's invoices for the USDA pieces, Kennebunk and. So and this, and this is that. that was June 28th and June 27th. And this is her bill, her invoicing for the bond, the municipal bond. Okay, so so this will go to the fire engine. This will go to the USDA loan. Okay. Would you like to look at that? Sure. So and file and tender on call engineering services. June 11th to 15th. Um, you signed it today, but I thought we reviewed this last week. No, this was new. Well, they're all looking the same. <laughs> well, probably. This was the new bill. So this was on uh, Task Order 8 that we signed about a month ago, and it was going on the Culbert project. Mm -hmm. okay, this is 3600. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, did it not get printed? That was for tonight, right? Yeah, I hope so. If it's not there, Jody, Jody and I will look at it next week and process it, Michael, unless you're concerned. So just to refresh our memory, that we signed the change order last week to remove Pine Street because we haven't gotten the permit yet, and lo and behold, the it. permit came in, and so we're doing the change order to put the permit Perfect. to put Pine Street back in the public carpet. Okay. So if it's not it's too bad, yeah, so we'll sign it next Monday. Yeah, I don't see anything in here looking like that. All right, let's do that. Uh, this is mail to Watson. Watson? Um, yeah. So he was our trade. Um, legal action. Um, well, that uh, court. No, just. <laughs> just to, for that we are aware of a um, class action lawsuit against the bank. Oh, so, I see. Against citizens? Citizens of Massachusetts. Oh, LIBOR. Oh, goodness. Okay. So do we have to do what? We probably only have to do something we don't want to participate, is usually how this works. Do you care? I mean, we'll, we'll just be participants. Yes, thank you. Good point. Her opinion that we should do something to tell us what typically is happening right now. Purchase order 1263 Seacoast Printing for 36 shirts for CAM um, for $234. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm writing, Eversource. I'm writing to inform you that Eversource Electrical Card in the town of Rollinsford has, you have been selected for our enhanced tree trimming program, the ETT. So, the ETT? Yep. ETTP. ETT. There's no, no enhanced tree trimming program. Sorry, they dropped the P. So, <laughs> removing, um, focuses on protecting the main power sources. The backbone of each of our four circuits. So, so this is associated Main Street, with the Boundary Street, South Street, General John Sullivan Way, and the Rollinsford, they wrote town down, transfer station. Okay, well, why not? I thought Sligo was part of it. Hmm. Well, 
to the extent that there are any trees on any of these that, that are ones yeah, that, that, away, yeah, yeah. That's, that's part of why we're waiting. Wow, it's a very, uh, it's very careful school center. Check in the occupancy. I don't know why it's in yours. <laughs> uh, two, uh, uh, 23 Wentworth Street. So, building permit uh, 2017 019. Math and lot is 21811. Uh, reviewed by Tom on the 24th. $50 fee. And signed by me already. So, because and here's, here's the thing. So when someone needs an occupancy in order to close and go to the bank, and Tom comes to me and says, look, they need this today. What do I, you know, I signed it. Because, I mean, he's, Tom has reviewed it. He's the person that does this sort of thing. Well, just send us an email from Paul if you did it. Yeah, well, well, here, this is it. I mean, this is, right? This is the email. <laughs> this is the equivalent. This is the email equivalent. Seven days later. Mm -hmm. No, I signed it on it was Thursday. Oh, so, Tom really yeah, on the yeah. So, so, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, if, if you'd like me to do something different. So um, there's another occupancy issue on 4th Street. Occupancy issue? Yeah. Um, about four year old house. Four the year duplex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's being rented out now, apparently. Uh, but there's no certificate of occupancy, and I would call it an issue. Because there were some issues with the, the, the other side a, had this not. Is an old issue, it right? is an old issue, yeah. But there hadn't been anyone living on that side. They've just seen it recently in the last week or so. So I don't know. There's a lot of work that needed to be done on that I side. That he... and Mr. Porter himself hadn't done it. And it but, you know, What's what are you talking about? Is it the side near the garden? Or? No, the other side. The side on the okay. uh, main street. So, so it's an issue in that there was never, okay. there never are there. So we should bring it to Tom's attention? Is that what we want to do? There was, you know, hopefully it was, mm -hmm. it was approved before someone started renting it. Maybe they're not renting. Maybe their family members are using it. I don't know. But are they still in there? So, yeah, okay. so I will do that. So it's the building. I don't know the address. Know the, address either. the duplex. Yeah. And then on at seven o five, I need to double check the address. The main, uh, yeah, main street. Um, they have a mattress a box room that's been behind their dumpster. Their their backyard, their dumpster on Front Street. Um, Front Street. That's been there for over a month. So it's easy. Right, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get, okay, I'm trying to get the connection so I can make the note on I got to confirm that. So the two books on four, and I'll just put four in because that will remind me of what it is. Okay, and the side away from the garden. The main street side. Yeah, not sure if it ever had a occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. And what about a building permit? Okay. And now the that night, so I lost track of the mattress. What we? I've got to confirm the mattress. Okay. Right. One twelve. What did we ever do with that? What's one twelve? Oh no. We've written letters. We're going to refer to people. Didn't, um, what's his name? That Kevin, I know that, but Kevin Wong, and then Robert Jones. I'll check with Kevin. Because we asked him. Okay. Trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. Anything so. else? Uh, everything else in here is from last week. So. All right. Uh, All right. So, and, oh, we went last. Yes. Met today, but we didn't have quorum, so we have to meet again next week. Oh. So. All right. Any, any comments from the community?
Nancy. Um, I just have a comment when you're talking the septic system being new to this. Um, it's actually the state gives the final approval as to where it is, how high it is. So it's a it's a state mandate and as you. to the. Yep. So if in fact we don't need Tom to review it, we'll just say don't. They just need a stamp so yeah, that they can, can send it to state, to state. Well, that's what okay. I had been doing at first. It was like I said, sign this kid, you know, so I just did. Yeah, because I went through a fight for three months over mine with the state. With the state. Not with us. No, the state. Once right. it's in, it can't be covered. The state comes, inspects it, makes sure every, everything's right, and then once they pass it, then they can cover it over. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Anything else? Board? Are we ready? Thank you. All right, so. Don't you think we should have some kind of public main opening of the transfer station? I thought it was or some kind of celebration. Yeah, that's a nice thing. We we'll think we can think about that. Maybe the fall. Maybe maybe in conjunction. Yeah. Well, I was going to say maybe in conjunction with Family Day, but not really because you don't want to distract. You don't. Yeah, okay. I got there. I got there, Denise. I got there. I'm have a hot dog and then come look at me. I got there. We're going to sell refreshments at the transfer <laughs> station. Yeah. So again. <laughs> but you know, but acknowledging all the work that's been done there, and so yeah. people can see it. Yeah. But maybe it's not a good plan. Your tax dollars at work. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, making you safe, making you more comfortable. Mm -hmm. or whatever. I, yeah. I don't know about that. Because mm -hmm. people are driving in saying, when are you going to put in the condos? Thinking it was a waste of money. Not realizing that the retaining wall needed to come in. And then we're going to save money on the second all that. So it's a 50 50. Yeah. But you know, well, so I think that there are probably. There are always going to be. Just because someone is I unhappy doesn't mean that a lot. Lots and lots of someone's are unhappy, and if the board is there, the board can be there to you know talk and answer questions and and you know assuage folks about their you know thoughts. So I, so I think it's I think it's a decent idea. Maybe in the fall when we think the weather will be cooler, you know, not a hot day like that. Could be a hot day. <laughs> so we'll think on it. Thank you. That's, that's a nice idea. All right. Are we ready now? <laughs> right. Very good. So, Mike, everything you know, you're going to be around? Just keep going away and busy.